wonderful things about being in a place like this is that it challenges us to see the beauty where it may or may not be that beautiful. I'm reminded of many years ago when I was coming home from university and I was with a family friend of mine and uh, we saw the world in very much the same way I thought until we looked up in the sky. It was one of those nights that you don't rarely see beautiful stars in the billions everywhere. And I began a sentence that he would finish. I began, I can't believe, and he said, yes, that seeing that people still believe in God. Well, there it is. There's that kind of challenge that places and times like this give to us. What do you think about life? How do you approach it? You know, I love Anton Chekhov's response to the Russian playwright. He described life this way. Life is basically like a flower in a field. A goat comes along and eats it up. No more flower. Well, okay, that's not the nicest image. But let's admit it, there are many people around us, loving, kind people who have that approach. There are others who take a different tact. Life is just basically merciless logic for a futile purpose. Yeah, it's hard to see the beauty in that. You see, we Christians, when we approach life, we approach it with a human instinct. We mean when we see a baby, when we see a child, when we see the elderly, when we see people at play, something arises in us that's joy-filled. Life to us, like all human beings, I think, is something that pulls out of us the divine. Now, that's not to say that only Christians and I want to be clear on this. It's not to say that only Christians love life. No, even Voltaire, I mean, he was no friend of religion or anything that even smelled of it. But he would say of himself through his characters in different times, I still have that problem where I'm in love with life. It's hard to get rid of, you see. But here we go again. For Christians, there is a difference. You see, it's not just that we love humanity. It's not just that we love family. It's not just that we love our environment as beautiful as it is. We don't just love a life principle. No, for Christians, we love the particulars. I look at a child and I want to know the name of that child. I want to help not just humanity, but I want to help my neighbor. You see, for the Christian, life always has a face attached to it. And if I, if I may, Christian has that one distinct difference. We go after the person. We fall in love with the person. But there are other distinctions as well, you know. We also have that wonderful thing where we see life as a choice. The Bible is very clear about it. We have to make the choice between the paths of life and death. And isn't that what we're seeing all over, at least in the West today? Well, everywhere else, I think. Will you choose life or death for others at their very beginning? Will you choose life or death for others at their very end? And how about the rest of us somewhere in the middle? Will we choose life that gives life? Or will we choose the kind of life that is not open to it? There's a third distinct uh, realm for us Christians, though. When we think of life, we don't just think of the individual or the general. We don't just think of you know, choices to be made in here, now, yesterday, tomorrow. No, for us, life has a name, and his name is Jesus Christ. For us, for Christians, we are in love with life. Why? Because we see it all around us, absolutely. Because we can see it even in the dark places, for sure. We look at our fellow humans and we see persons. We look at our choices and we see a path of light. But most of all, we look at life and we see a vague, vague, familiar face. Someone we've been in love with for a very long time. And his name is Jesus Christ. We want to show him to you. If only we can do that, well, we'll be doing a pretty good job. Amen.